I was dating somebody once. I was 19 or 20. I was like, hey, why didn't you why didn't you kiss me last night? And he's like, because I thought you had herpes on your lip. And I was like, but it's a pimple. Like, I, I, I get these little ingrown hairs on my lips. <laughs> a week. Was so embarrassed and felt so ashamed. It really makes you, this is like a therapy session for me, by the way. <laughs> Well, good. 2004, 2005. I have to deal with Laguna <laughs> Beach, the OC. Seth Cohen, definitely one of my first crushes. Definitely the reason I have dated <laughs> nerds. Definitely the reason I have like slept with skinny brunettes. Like 100%. If I die, I like imagine like who he's going to take up with and i imagine oh, that I she's like a Mark good who. replacement mother yeah so i told oh my god that's yes literally told him who he needed to go what? find like a real person a real person that like i was like yeah yeah insane oh my god you're yeah, making me insane. realize something i had not acknowledged to myself i had been lying to myself about it but i think i have a real person in mind you do <laughs> of course you do of one you of do. my partner's exes yeah, yeah like she's it's, great it was she's yeah, great. It was someone mark no it's someone mark dated her vibe is like very similar she's crunchy granola like little whatever and i was like that's it that's the mom that's who i want Love he's it. like busy please can we not i'm like no but you need to know this because you know what it stabilizes the anxiety it's like the illusion yeah. of control yes. you're like i'll be dead but i can control who is in proximity to my kids. That's exactly right. That's exactly <laughs> right. I had a special relationship with this frog. Like, this is my frog, you know? So I picked up this frog, just carrying her around. I noticed that she started to get a bit dry. And I'm like, well, I gotta, I gotta moisten her up. <laughs> I, I, there was a bucket of water. We dropped her in the water and she was immediately like scrambling to get out. And I was like, oh no, no. So I reach in the water and I find out that it's like boiling hot water. <gasps> I know. Later, some friends were like fishing at the pond and they reeled in this stiff, dead frog. Oh my God. <laughs> what? I just, well, what I didn't expect was you just keep going like, oh God. When I write these, I try to like think about the person. So these are particularly engineered to haunt you. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Your likeness is used in this ad. A self carry peaceful photo of you looking blissed out. A horrible quote that says something like, Rosebud Baker's a self care queen. Yeah. <laughs> and it. This is crazy how well you picked this out. I was just like, <laughs> let me think about what I think I know about this person from her work. <laughs> <laughs> this is so on the nose. It is on those billboards in the train. Everywhere. Rosebud Baker is a self-care queen. Every time I walk into the cellar, Keith Robinson is telling me that I'm a self-care queen. Some of those subway ads, they'll just leave them up there. Like 20 years later, you're like, why is Bad Girls Club still <laughs> get the same feeling from self-care talk? that mm -hmm. I would get from like masturbating as a kid. Where you're like, yeah. oh, what is wrong with me? <laughs> yes. I did something this evil. I'm deeply broken for this. <laughs> yeah. It's like a fundraiser for this organization that like helps victims of sex trafficking. Only occurred to me after the fact that I was like, why would they book a comedian for their event? That doesn't feel <laughs> like a natural fit. They brought up like, a bunch of victims of sex trafficking to talk about their experiences and then they were like and now we'll serve dinner and have a comedian after the victims have spoken have like given their testimony yes and i was just like oh what have i done i just like tried to pivot to like hey we all live in new york and that's wild <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> things a therapist can say that will immediately make me go I'm out. You ask me what my sign is, I'm out. You express anything r r r religious in a traditional way, I'm out. I'm out. Cut and run. One mistake like I, that. I, I, therapists working in a secular world, you shouldn't be talking Jesus. Or, or if you do, I'm out. Because I know deep down you're like, well, the real problem to your mom issues, Jesus Christ. I usually tend to be more interested in, in women and like, people who are fem on the feminine side of the spectrum, you know, when I am interested in like cis men, they're all 
eccentric little dandies. Yeah, yeah. Like a ducky. Like is that yes. kind of like yeah. a straighter ducky. One of my big ones growing up was like Cosmo and Singing in the Rain. Yeah. <laughs> my mm-hmm. friend said to me, he said to me, he said, You're a ducky chaser. And I was like, Oh my God, I am. This concept of like, you interrupted me. I'm like, what? Oh, I wasn't finished you interrupting. I'm like, yeah, I had some shit to say. <laughs> Whoever has the best shit to say wins. Mm-hmm. And that's how I grew up. Like now it's like one at a time. Like, why did we let the most boring talkers on the planet? make the rules for talking. I, I take baths. I love a bath. People go, you sit in your own filth. You sit in your own filth. What? What am I, a construction worker? I'm a writer. You're not going to call me dirty because you feel dirty. Elwood was really, um, genuinely watched that show and then decided that I wanted to have a lesbian experience. I was working in Ottawa in the government department of justice when I was a lawyer and I was quite bored there. And so I started renting the DVDs. I would go home and I would like close the blind and I'd be like, I was so into it. I don't want to suggest that TV shows make you gay. In my case, it was definitely the government. (laughs) Would bring like Caribbean food to class. And that was also like smelly. And so like, uh, and in the best way to me in the best way, but as a kid, you know, kids are are awful. And so now I realize whenever I order it, uh, there's also like a a level of awareness. My husband's white. And so like, there's a level of like, look at my, my ox (laughs) tails. Like, are you okay with this? My therapist and I broke up this week. Why? Why did you break up? First of all, she did it five minutes before I was going to do it. <gasps> I moved out to LA from New York two years ago. We'll just keep seeing each other. And she was like, but I'm not licensed there. And I was like, well, Raquel, we're just two pals chatting, aren't we? Cindy, did we- you say that? <laughs> yeah. Is that crazy? What? No paper trail. I was like, who's to say we're not two friends chatting? It actually is illegal. <laughs> You can get in a lot of trouble. Maybe she just kind of saw an escape hatch. And I don't blame her. She did stress to me that it was illegal. And I was just like, Raquel, you silly girl. I really liked him so much. I had pulled an all-nighter. I've been awake for over 24 hours now. Dreams were coming in and out. And it was almost like I was falling asleep while making out with him, but like still awake. Meanwhile, in my life, there's this guy, Say his name is Jazz. I fell into sort of a dream, like Jazz was in my dream. And as I was making out with this guy, I said, jazz, <gasps> it gets worse. Yeah, it gets, it gets a lot worse. Fast thinking. The word yes sounds a little bit like the word jazz. <laughs> so I started saying yes while we were like fooling around the way that I thought like sexy people would be like, yes, yes. So I'm trying to sort of make my first yeses sound sort of like jazz. So I'm like, yes, yes, yes. Yes. And it was just so horrible because first of all, I'm sure he heard me say jazz. Second of all, is all of a sudden I've turned into some sort of weird, creepy porn actress saying like, yes, yes. But like a queen, I'm all yes, yeah. Oh God, we're already in it. It, oh no that's what happens you know why because i also have a secret career as a therapist i saw this in the description of your podcast this morning <laughs> psychotherapist turned comedian i was like i have been lied to i have been <laughs> lied to i trusted you um so i just had to say um because mm-hmm. i got scared what were you uh, scared of no don't do that i that's can't all. i thought you were a comedian i have felt such regret for saying yes to this i picture someone who hates me listening to me on a podcast Does um that help? and help me get cancer in five years <laughs> so um, why do you do that well it's free <laughs> it makes me feel terrible <laughs> mm-hmm. and i don't want to hurt anyone Yeah, but I think it's good. Oh my God, you're being a therapist. Oh my, no, see, okay, this is the thing, Anna, this is just how I am. I'm like this all the time with anybody. In the moments where I say you're being therapist, I think I'm catching myself feeling genuinely comforted and held by you, and I am hitting the escape hatch, because I don't (laughs) want to feel good, because that way I feel bad. What feels good about feeling bad? No! (laughs) Anna, I cannot not ask you that question at this moment. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. Come on! Uh, oh my god! Uh,